Hello there. Welcome to another edition of the program Total Woman on AD4 TV Radio. My name is Mute Olori. Human immune deficiency virus is the virus that causes AIDS. And about 38 million people are presently living with HIV. Why millions of people have died of AIDS-related causes since the start of the epidemic. Now, globally, efforts have been mounted to address the epidemic, and despite the challenges, significant progress has been made in addressing HIV. But a cure has not been found. With modern technology advancement, people living with HIV are living a normal life through the impact of HIV education. Although ignorance has led so many to untimely death, some have transferred the virus to loved ones and even unborn babies due to ignorance. So in reducing the spread of the virus and ensuring a comfortable life for those who are already living with the virus, HIV education is key and relevant. So on the program today, Total Woman, we will be discussing the relevance of HIV education to the public, especially amongst pregnant women and youth. So to discuss this with me, I have a dynamic, versatile, seasoned and highly motivated educationist and administrator. She is a gender advocate, a deputy director with the Federal Ministry of Education in the federal capital of Nigeria. She has over 17 years experience in HIV AIDS and gender programming. Please join me to welcome Norum and Akeme. You're welcome on my program. Thank you very much, Mute. Wow. It's good so day, good everyone. Day. Thank you. Now, let, let's talk about, you know, um, the fact that, you know, recently the world uh, spotlighted the issue of HIV AIDS because so many things have happened. You have Ebola, you have um, coronavirus. Most of these things have overtaken um, the issues of HIV AIDS. So for the benefits of our viewers, um, can you educate us on what HIV AIDS is all about? I'm glad to be here. Good morning. HIV is human immunodeficiency, uh, immunodeficiency virus, as you have already said. Why AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. I always tell people when I was really talking about AIDS, I said, when you talk about HIV, it's like the human body. You know, you have cells, you have a lot of things that keeps your immunity. You liken it to a house. When you build a house, it has a roof, it has everything intact, so it can stay. But when AIDS enters, it's like a house that the roof has been removed. Mm. And so rodents and everything, rain will fall and the house goes down. So also it happens with the human body. And so when AIDS, when HIV comes, if you don't treat it, if you don't take your antiretroviral, if you don't do anything before you know, it transforms to AIDS, which kills. Because then you will start having all the signs and symptoms and before you know it, you are dead. But when you have AIDS, uh, HIV, you're as good as having somebody who has, uh, let's say, um, let's, what will I liken it to now? Somebody who has diabetes, so once you are on your antiretroviral, you eat well, you take your drugs and everything, you are fine. You can live your normal life. And we have tried in every way to remove stigma. Oh, oh that's, a, that's another major one. But, so, but how, how is it contracted? Like I said, so many things have come up and we, we seem not to really... Oh, so, somebody asked me a question. Oh, so this issue is still there. And I hear it's on the increase now with the statistics that just came out recently because spotlights have been taken away from it. So how do one or how can one contract um, HIV, uh, which we now know leads to AIDS? Yes, thank you. You see, HIV, the main mode of transmission, it's through sexual intercourse, exchange of body fluids and all that through mother-to-child uh, transmission. But you see, as long as we are alive and there is no cure for AIDS, and then our youths are so, 
like, what's the word that we use for it? Active, ad yes. active adventurous, and all that. So it will continue to increase. And then most especially, there is this ignorance and adventure that these children take part in. They will believe that it is not me. Some of them even believe that ah, somebody who has AIDS will be looking rickety and this and that. And so because of the adventure nature or because of uh, peer Pe group influence. And even ignorance. Yes. So they are likely to embark on this journey of having uh, a sexual adventure. And so they will contact it. So is it only through that thing? No. There's mother to child trans uh, transmission. There is a... Uh, 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 what we call a um, uh, blood transfusion, like infected blood when, it's, when you are sick or something and you have to be transfused, you can get it. And other body fluids, though there is none in saliva and all that. Oh, so okay. that is so a you good thing. Hear yes. that it could be transfused through exactly, to saliva. Exactly, but yes, yeah, you know, well, yes, okay. unless you have to drink <laughs> drums and drums of saliva. Yeah. For it to get there. Okay, so let's look at um, the education of, of, of people. Why, why is it um, on the low right now? I think, maybe, I would say because of COVID and there are more pressing issues now that have made it so that the whole world is now focusing on COVID, education and all that. That's why it seems to be on the low. And then maybe commitment by stakeholders is now a bit low too. But government has really done a lot to ensure that programs and strategies are put down. So these programs are still on course and it's still ongoing. And so it's just that there's no too much noise being made now but programs are still there steadily to ensure that children, pupils, uh, uh, even at the university level, the secondary level, the primary level, they all are aware that there's something like HIV and AIDS. Well, okay, but with the st statistics recently, it shows that it's very high. Well, how important is this education we're talking about um, in, 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 in to the public? Education is key. Because I always tell everybody that in everything you do, knowledge is power. And so in school, if the children from primary, and because there are little, little bits of things you can train children to know about HIV and AIDS and sexuality, so that they are aware of it. But you find out that our society and some key stakeholders do not want us to talk about things about sexuality. Once they hear about sexuality, they believe that you are teaching their children about sex education, which is not true. <laughs> but, but it's even important that these students should have the knowledge of sex, sex, um, sex education. I mean, that's why we have prevalence of um, teens' pregnancy and all that, uh, you know. <laughs> you are very, is within our yes, society. You are very right, but you need to meet with people, stakeholders, traditional leaders, religious leaders, if you interact with some of them, you will know that they are, a, uh, what will I call it? They are the ones blocking these people from knowing what they should know. Because of political reasons, they do not want them to know so that they do not react. What are these political reasons? One, they, they know that, that if you know your right, you will be able to speak up and they don't want you to speak up. That's one. Then other reasons is because of commitment. They know that if you agree to these programs being put in place, they have to be able to make commitments in terms of finances. And they don't want to make that commitment in terms of finances. And then another thing is they don't want the women to stand up for themselves. Because as long as the women are suppressed, then the male folk are happier. Because you know the type of society we live in today. That is why. So because of that, they don't even, because for every woman, once you train a woman, you've trained the whole family. She's likely to take it down to ensure that her children and everybody along are educated. Because education is power. Ignorance kills. And that is the main thing we have to fight. If you educate the youths who are the most exposed to the HIV and AIDS virus, if they know what they should do, then they will be able to overcome it. But another thing is this, our girls and our boys who are exposed to it, the girls, the boys may know a, boy, a lot more than the girls. And some of them have this belief that, ah, if I sleep with a virgin, I will not con contact, uh, contact HIV and AIDS. 
And so they deceive the girls. Yes. And the girls will believe it. I remember the friend was just telling me recently, a child came home. He had a school father in school. And the school father was saying, telling him some things that uh, they said, if he doesn't have sex, he will have problems. He will die young because he has uh, some side, uh, some type of sickness and all that. I told her, I said, please, please call that girl and start talking to her. I say, lie. Because that's the least, an open door. The guy wants to take advantage of this girl so that when she, he comes up with his intentions, the girl will not know. Because at the end, he will say, okay, just sleep with me. Nothing will happen to you. So education yes. is key. I mean, for Very us key. To, to bring to the fore that these things exist. Exactly. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to take a short break. When I come back, we will be looking at government's uh, parts, what we think government should start doing, and we also address the issue of stigmatization. Thank you. All right, it's the Total Woman on AD4 TV Radio, and we are talking about education of HIV AIDS and its importance and relevance to the public, especially now that we have other issues on the front burner. Please don't go away, I'll be right back. There's a wind of change blowing over Nigeria, and it's coming from the Tertiary Education Trust Fund. If you want to find out how TED Fund is bringing the Nigerian government industry and the academia together to drive a new knowledge economy. Tune in to this station every Wednesday at 8 p.m. for TED Fund, The Paradigm Shift. It's informative, it's innovative, and it's exciting. TED Fund, The Paradigm Shift, proudly produced by 84 TV Radio. Welcome back, it's the Total Woman on 84 TV Radio, and we are talking about the relevance of um, education on the issues of HIV AIDS. Now, the government and some non-governmental organizations have been making efforts to sensitize people about the virus, but new cases and new details um, are being recorded. So what do you think we can do uh, when it comes to um, emphasizing more on prevention? Okay. Uh, first and foremost, government has, like, like I told you before, put up structures which is supposed to yield dividend after a while because there is the family life HIV and AIDS education curriculum which was infused into subjects. So the students from nursery, primary and all that have to learn a little bit of HIV and AIDS as they grow so that they know about HIV and AIDS prevention. That is one. It may seem that HIV is on the increase, but it may not actually be true because, you know, those who were infected are still alive because they are on medications, so their lifespan is increasing. Meanwhile, new infections are taking place. Remember, those who were infected are still alive. So you will count them when you are counting those who are newly infected. So with the new infection, definitely there will be a rise in the number of those who were infected. But that does not uh, say, give us the fact, does not dispute the fact that it is increasing because some, some new infections are still coming up. So what do we do? There's a lot of things, to do, a lot of creation of awareness should be done, not only by government, because we cannot leave everything to government. NGOs are into it. But we see that most of our NGOs, despite the fact that they work on it, they, they are still looking for money to survive. And because of that, anything, like now the parad paradigm shift is to uh, COVID. So everybody is we, we, going we, into there COVID. There was also this uh, information that uh, uh, most of the funders actually cut down funding to Africa when it comes to HIV AIDS. How true is that? That is true because most, uh, most of the donors are now focusing on other uh, infections like uh, diabetes, cancer, and most recently COVID, which everybody is focusing on now. So there is diversion of funds. But then our government is now trying to put in a little more resources into it to ensure that most people are aware because Prevention is key. Without prevention, we cannot do anything. So you find out that even in tertiary institutions, there is uh, preventive education in GNS or general studies, as the case may be. So it's already in the curriculum. 
for them to take as a course so that they know what to do. Because you find out that education is key to anything you want to do in life. And so when these children from primary to the tertiary level are aware of what to do in terms of HIV and AIDS, then eventually we will see a decrease or a decline in the rate of infection because these children will not be misinformed and pair groups will not sway them to the other side. So these are the things we think we should look at. Okay, while we were talking, you mentioned one of the um, um, key methods of transmission is mother to child. Education us a little bit about, about that, especially for pregnant women. Um, what do they need to know? Is it, is it a myth that once you have HIV AIDS, the child will automatically have? Or are there things that as pregnant women we need to know? Because I've seen cases where uh, infected mothers would have to look up of how to terminate the pregnancy and other um, things that they need to do because they just believe that it's direct transmission once you are pregnant. So give us some education on yes, that. Yes, it's, it's really a myth because even if you don't do anything and you are infected as a mother, you have between 14 to 45 percent chances of infecting your child. 14? 14 to 45 percent okay. chances of infecting of transmitting it to your child. But with present antiretrovirals, which will reduce your viral load to the barest minimum, there is only if you go through the normal antenatal clinic, you have only 1% chance of transmitting this to your child. So the child will be HIV and AIDS free, the mother will be HIV, will, be, will live a normal life because her viral load will be very, very low, as if she's nothing. So the mother who is infected and the child who is born without infection can live their lives as if they were not infected. Because for now, HIV is not even as serious as COVID that we see, or even cancer. So it's just misinformation that is bringing the stigma and all that. And because of stigma, we find out that most people are hiding under the table. That, that, and so it is... Still going on. That is the greatest challenge. Exactly. That is the greatest challenge. So how do we handle that? And or how will people living with HIV AIDS, uh, HIV handle that? Because it's the biggest challenge they actually face. Where the fact that, I mean, there was a time if you are looking at my shit, and somebody automatically <laughs> labels you as uh, you oh, this person yes. must have uh, an HIV AIDS. It must be HIV uh, positive. So how do we handle this issue of stigmatization? Stigma one education, like I would say, education of the general populace, using the media. You, your media is key to that because most people don't know what is going on. They don't know the facts. When you give somebody the facts, the person works with the facts. So we use the media, we use the churches, we use the mosque, we use all, so the social media is key now. Our youths, all of them, even our children at home, by the time you are talking to them, they are on social media. So if we can use all this to our advantage to tell people the truth, that HIV is, is no more a death sentence because from beginning, the mindset was such that once you get AIDS, you are finished. Mm. So because of that, most people became scared. That fear drove people underground. And because of the fear, more people now stigmatize those who had AIDS or HIV and do not want to associate with anybody who had HIV. But now, with awareness, a lot of medication, good hospital services, uh, good antenatal services that are available to people. And then if we create a lot of awareness, and you tell the people, this person is as normal as yourself. The, sorry, the, the fact that the person has HIV does not mean he's dying tomorrow. Or that if the person relates to you, you are going to get the infection. So by the time people are really, really aware, and then those people themselves who are infected, tell everybody, I'm infected, there's nothing to be ashamed of. And then they come out themselves. A lot of people have come out. And it gave HIV a face. Mm. Because to, that HIV has human face. It's, a hum, it's, it's human beings that get it. Because the average Nigerian will tell you, ah, I cannot have it. It's not my portion. Whose portion is it? <laughs> that is it. Whose portion? So that is where we are. To tell everybody that it is anybody like you that can get it. We are all 
we cannot be exposed to it. We just have to take precautions. And the fact that I'm exposed to it, the fact that I'm infected, does not mean that my children are infected. Does not mean you are better than me. Even if I'm infected, I'm, I can live a better life, better than yourself. I know poverty is another thing that is killing most people who are infected because our education, our health facilities are in shambles. And so they cannot have enough money to, uh, to address or take their medications. And there are a lot of things when you've not seen food to eat. Are you talking of medications? So those are the issues that is compounding the problem. All right. So that brings me to my next um, most important uh, issue. Because we all know that when a man is affect, affected, he cannot affect another man. But he can affect 5, 6, 10, 20 women um, at the same time. So we are also more like on the receiving end. And of course, we also have to bring up our children um, on that. So let's look at women generally. What are the do's and don'ts that we must put in place, especially for pregnant women and young people? What are the do's and don'ts of HIV that we must know? Huh. When you talk of, I know that the do's and don'ts are this. The woman is incapacitated first and foremost because when you are married and the man is polygamous, you cannot say no. Because you find out that to tell the man when he wants to have sex with you and you say no, then he will take offense. That's another problem. But you find out that even if the man is married to only you, you are not sure of the partners he has outside. Because if he has like two partners, you don't know how many people those partners have. So it's like if I'm sleeping with only my husband, I think it's two people myself and my husband, but my husband is sleeping with two people. And those people, even if they are sleeping with two people each, you multiply by the number of people. So you eventually you yourself, you are sleeping with about 100 people. So what we should do is to be able to tell, talk to our husbands, and if we don't feel safe, to be able to negotiate for use of safety devices like condom. Though in Africa, if you tell your husband to use condom, you are in trouble. You, yes, that's the truth. So those are the things we have to have sort of have negotiation skills. That is what I think we should do. And you know that when a woman is empowered, she can actually talk and have a stand even in her home and be able to talk and be able to guide what happens. So among the female folk, I think there should be a synergy where women can talk, where women can be empowered to be able to have a stand, to be able to to be able to talk in the society or talk in the sphere of things that are happening so that their voices will be heard. Then you ask the second question, I think. The don'ts. The don'ts. The do's, that, don'ts, yeah. the do's and don'ts we, uh, women should do. Women should know that they are more exposed, they are more vulnerable to getting HIV and AIDS than the man. The man himself should know that because he is sleeping with people outside, he can get infection and destroy his family. So the, the, do, the don'ts for the woman is that she should stay within her matrimony and not be unfaithful. Yeah, but we also have the other issues about blood transfusion and cuts and all those things we talked yes, about. Yes, in terms of sharp needles, yes. she can control that. If anybody can control that, being the man, the woman, and the youth, by the time you tell them, they'll be able to control that. Then when it comes to blood transfusion, make sure the blood you are going to be given is screened for HIV and AIDS. Not only HIV, but other infections can be there. So any blood you are going to be given should be screened. And then some people have this notion that it's solely sexual intercourse. What of the people who have anal sex? They can still get HIV. So you, the most important thing is to be Okay. able to know all these things so, in so, holistic form. So, so I need to correct myself. That means a man can actually transmit yes, to, to another, another man. man. Yes. So it goes both ways. So it's not only the woman, but the man is, is, is vulnerable as well. So when we know all these do's and don'ts of we should not share sharp objects, we should, uh, the woman should know that uh, both people should know that uh, they should not have on, uh, take on screen blood. Yes, they yes. should be protected sexually yeah. and everything. By the time we look at all of them, holistically, I'm sure we will stay safe. Do you encourage uh, testing now? Yes, of course. How do you go about educating someone to go for HIV tests, especially young people about to wed? You know, and 
<laughs> this category of people. How do you go about educating them that it's so important and key that they must go for that test? Yes. One thing I do is I don't tell young people to do this or do that. Because if you tell them not to do something, they will not do it. So what you do, you can say, you talk with them and give them examples of the advantages of doing that thing. You say, okay, my dear, I, I have this experience with somebody who did not do a test and something, something happened. By the time you tell the person a story, yes, you tell the girl what has happened about an experience that it may be true, it may not be true, about what happened some time ago and how the person reaped the consequences. By the time you tell that person the story, the youth, the young person herself, will make up her mind to go and do that test. So most times you don't tell somebody, go and do the test, no. You just tell the person the advantages of doing it, somebody who did it, this happened. Uh, the person who did do it, this was what happened. By the time you finish, the girl herself will make up her mind. She will go. <laughs> she will tell you, mommy, I'm going to do the test. Once you hear a girl going to do tests, there's this notion or you know, that people that just are attached to a young girl who wants to say, okay, I want to do this test. Do you think it's only the girls? I think the boys themselves are even shy of doing the same test because most times we have this misconception that it's only girls. No, boys also have that notion that if I go, it will look as if I, am, I was promiscuous or something and that is why I am going for the test. The thing is, I always say the testing center should be left in a friendly place where Everybody, it's not just testing for HIV here. Do you get it? Yes. You can test for other diabetes. You can test for, even, you can be doing BP, your test for your blood pressure. All types of tests can be in that center. So it's just a like walking center. The girl can walk in and do the test. Because it's the same thing like you'd ask a girl to go to the pharmacy to buy condom. When she gets there, she sees somebody who is older or somebody she knows, she will go back, she will pretend she wants to buy paracetamol or so and go away. But if you make it open in such a way that it is child-friendly, youth-friendly, like youth-friendly centers, you put it there, they can just walk in with nobody knowing that they are doing any test. They will just tell you, my dear, I want to do this. And nobody will attach anything to, the, to it. And it's also because of stigma too. So, because if I am going to do my blood pressure. I do, I'm not embarrassed to tell somebody I'm going to the hospital to do that test or to do my blood sugar level. So why will I be shy to say I'm going to do my HIV and AIDS test? It's because of the stigma. So if we take off the stigma, open the box, everybody will know that come. There's nothing to it. We can walk in and do it. But because we've all attached that stigma, that is why it is difficult for young people to go in to do the test. So let's remove and open the box. Wow. <laughs> wow, my guest, a dynamic, versatile, seasoned and highly motivated educationist and administrator, a gender advocate and a deputy director with the Federal Ministry of Education. And she has been for 17 years working on HIV AIDS and gender programs, uh, Nora. And Akeme, thank you so much for for shedding so much light on the need uh, for education. Uh, uh, before I let you go, one last word. And okay, where do we get tested? To, how how can we get centers? You know, for women who want to really um, get tested or or you know check themselves, how should they? Where, where can they go? Testing centers are in all teaching hospitals. For instance, you have it in all federal medical centers. You have it even, even at Sokoro or state general hospital, or state general hospitals. Then in, in some universities, you have it in these um, centers, healthcare centers, normal healthcare centers. You walk in there and you get tested. So all clinics, most clinics, they can Are, are there get kits tested. that people can buy and, and test? Of recent, I think I read somewhere that there were kits that somebody can even now test themselves and it's simplified. There are ways you can do it. It tells you what to do. So you just go across the counter, you buy the kit, and you do your test at home. How cheap so, can women get access to the, to the, to the drugs? The antiretroviral. They've been, they are greatly subsidized by the federal government. And so when you register as somebody, initially they were free. So for now, I don't know how much they are paying, but I think it is minimal. 
And so if you have access to any hospital and you are able to go on antiretroviral from the beginning of pregnancy till you deliver, that child has 99% chances of not getting HIV. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you. All right, so in this season and this time where um, young people are very sexually active, instead of talking about do's and don'ts like my guest says when you tell a young person do not that's what they want to go do i think we need to educate them and let them know the options that are available but it's better to stay free so a positive hiv diagnosis is not something to be taken lightly but with modern treatment hiv is no longer a death sentence like you hear it 99.9 percent .9 a child has a tendency to be hiv free so HIV positive patients now can live long and be happy even without taking too much pills. But just stay on it and you'll be fine. All right, so that's Total Woman on 84 TV Radio. I'll join you again next week with another guest and another issue. Thank you. God bless you.